Blessings. I am Ian Van Zandt and welcome to The R Spot. If you're a first timer, we're so glad that you joined us and want to remind you to subscribe to Ian Van Zandt's YouTube channel so that you'll get a notice every time a new R Spot episode is launched. And if you're continuing on this journey with us, you know we've been having a good, good time talking about all things related to relationships. Today's topic is probably the one that I should have started with, but I know had I started here, you would have never come back for episode two because our conversation today is about the relationship you are having with yourself. Whew, that's a deep one because every relationship that you have in your life or that you've ever had in your life with every single person is a reflection of the relationship that you are having with yourself people come into our life into our experience to show us to demonstrate to reflect and mirror back to us the places and pieces and parts of ourselves that we cannot see are unwilling to see that we deny or dismiss or ignore Every relationship in your life is a reflection of the relationship that you're having with yourself. Now, right now, if you're having some resistance to that, if you're thinking about your ex or your ex-mother-in-law or your girlfriend or somebody that betrayed you and your mind is telling you that can't be true, that's not right, that's it. That's it right there. Because there are parts of us, there are things about us that we simply cannot see, sometimes we don't want to see, sometimes we see and then we ignore or deny. You see, each and every one of us has what we call a shadow part. That's the part of us that we uh, hide and, and, and cover and covet those pieces and aspects and things about ourselves that we find unpleasant or unacceptable. We tuck them away in the shadow and someone will come into our life and reflect a light on that shadow and that's when we see it. We see it in them. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Let's take for example your Aunt Mabel. <laughs> Aunt Mabel works your last good nerve. I mean when she comes around Everything she does, every way she does it, what she says and how she is just works your last good nerve. And you really work with yourself not to just go in on her. I mean, really go in on her because that's Aunt Mabel and you want to be respectful. But here's the piece that you're missing. If you didn't recognize it, you wouldn't be able to identify it. And when Aunt Mabel isn't around, you can give a minute description of everything about her that you don't like. Everything she does and the way she does it, you can recount it, you can recount it because there is a part of you that recognizes it. So, instead of getting upset with Aunt Mabel, instead of picking Aunt Mabel apart, when she does something that triggers you, ask yourself, hmm, why is that upsetting me? How do I do that? When do I do that? Under what circumstances do I behave in that way, the same way as Aunt Mabel? Because Aunt Mabel is shining a light on your shadow. Aunt Mabel, Uncle Sam, your co-worker, your supervisor, the bank teller, everybody else. People come into our lives and they mirror back to us the pieces and parts of ourselves that we cannot, will not, do not want to see. And it's all a reflection of the relationship that we're having with ourselves. Do you love you? I mean, really love and accept you. Do you trust you? Do you trust your own thoughts and feelings? Do you honor you? Do you respect you? And where did you learn how to do that? Because so many of us have a disjointed or dysfunctional relationship with ourselves because of what we've seen and what we've been taught and what we've been told. And the relationship that we have with ourselves more often than not mirrors what we've been taught and what we've seen and what we've experienced. But in order to truly grow and evolve in our soul and our way of being, we want to develop a relationship with ourselves, a good, solid, loving, functional relationship with ourselves. So how do you do that, Miss Yama? How do you develop a relationship with yourself? Well, it starts here. Who am I? Not what do I do? Who am I? 
not the roles that I fill. Who am I when the lights are off and I'm naked and I stand before the mirror? Who am I? This is a question you must answer. Not who were you taught to be? Who were you told to be? Who you think you should be? Who are you? And there's a very simple way to find out. Ask yourself, pencil to paper, who am I? I am a woman. Who am I? I am a creative being. Who am I? What are those things about you that come forward? Those things that make you tick? Those things that pump you up? Those things that drag you down? Who am I? You've got to answer that question. And don't judge yourself if you don't know it. So very often we think if we're 30 or 40 or 50 years old, we need to know. But how many of us have really sat and asked the question? We know what we do. We know what is expected of us. We know what our obligations and responsibilities are. But who am I in the middle of the night when I wake up and there's nobody there? Who am I? in a crowd of people where I feel uncomfortable or where everybody's in a pink dress and I've got on a green one. Who am I then? Who am I? Answer that question. The next step to really developing a healthy relationship with yourself is understanding what matters to you. What do you value? Do you value freedom? Do you value peace? Do you value external validation? Do you value children or animals? What do you value and what matters to you? How do you discover that? Again, pen to paper. What matters to me is. What matters to me is. What matters to me is. Because very often we go into relationships and settle for less than we want, deserve, or desire because we don't know what matters to us and we don't know how to ask for it. And more often than not, we don't expect to get it. But when you know who you are, when you know what you value, when you know what matters to you, every relationship that you go into, you will expect and you will receive reciprocation for who you are and what you give and what matters and what you value because you will attract to you more of who you are. And when you're clear about who you are and when you're clear about what matters, well, like draws like. That's just the law. That's how it works. The next step, see yourself. See yourself as your best and see yourself as your worst and don't judge it. Accept it. Self-acceptance. There are some things about me that I love and there are some things about me that I'd rather nobody ever knew. But you know what I've learned to do? I've learned to put that stuff out front. I don't hide it. I don't deny it. I don't lie about it. And when it shows up in my face, either in someone else's behavior or when I'm in my stuff doing my thing, I accept it. Self-acceptance. See yourself. Know yourself. Know what makes you tick. Know what brings you peace, what brings you joy, what makes you happy. Know what makes you crazy. There are some things that make me crazy. Brooklyn crazy. <laughs> and I just accept that about myself. And I try to announce it. Listen, that right there, what you're doing is making me crazy. And if you don't stop, I'm going total Brooklyn on you. Okay? <laughs> See yourself. Know yourself. Accept yourself. Accept all of who you are without judging it. So very often we think we should be somewhere else doing something else. We think we should be in another place in life and we should have more. Well, if you don't know who you are and what matters and what values, what you got is what you've created from a lack of knowledge of yourself. See yourself. Know yourself. Accept yourself without judgment. Without judgment. Don't make you wrong about who you are, what you've done, what you haven't done, and where you are. Because as you really learn who you are and what you value and what makes you tick, and as you accept all of it as a part of who you are, the, the light part, the shadow part, things are going to start moving. See yourself, know yourself, accept yourself. Appreciate yourself. No matter where you are today, you got you there. The good and the not so good. No matter who you are today, you've been with you through it all. Appreciate who you are. 
And finally, honor yourself. Honor your feelings. Honor your thoughts. Honor your gifts. Honor your strengths. Honor your weaknesses. Work on those things that need to be worked on. Give yourself permission to explore, to stand up, to fall down, to not be perfect all the time. Honor who you are, where you are, what you do, how you do it, and commit yourself to be better. Because as you learn who you are, you'll shift, you'll change. As your values grow and evolve, you'll do things better. Some things you won't do at all anymore. This is how we learn to build a relationship with ourselves. And it's important because who you are will attract people into your life to mirror back to you more of who you are. It is absolutely essential. Whether you're 20 or 30 or 60 or 79, to have a loving, healthy, fulfilling relationship with yourself on your good days and on your bad days. Because who you are and how you are with you will attract people into your life to give you more of the same. So, instead of being upset about being left, instead of being disturbed about feeling used or manipulated, look at how you do that to you. Because how you treat yourself trains people about how they're gonna treat you. So, hope you've got some tips from today and that you'll join me next time right here on The R Spot. In the meantime, stay in peace not in pieces.